Good morning. All those present today, representatives of different civil society organizations, I would like to open hearing number 14 of the 185 ordinary period of sessions of the IACHR, which is entitled The Situation of Freedom of Association in Nicaragua. It was requested by the Centro Nicaragüense de Derechos Humanos, CENIF, El Centro de Asistencia Legal para Pueblos Indígenas, CALPI, the Centro de Información y Servicios de Asesoría de Salud, CISAS, the Centro de Estudios y Promoción Social, CEPS, um, the Human Rights Group, Nunca Más, and the International Law and Justice Center, Sahil, the Coordinator of Childhood and Adolescence, Podeni, the Forum for Education and Human Development, the Foundation for the Conservation and Development of the Southeast Area of Nicaragua, also, ADEMOS, um, the Instituto de Lirajo de las Segovias, the Mesoamerican Initiative for Women Defenders of Human Rights, the Institute for Development and Democracy, IPADE, as well as the International, the CIPADE, the National Institute for Race, Equality and Human Rights, the Nicaragua Federation for Democracy and Local Development, Red Local, the Foundation for Promotion and Municipal Development, Popol Na, the Autonomous Movement of Women, MAM, and the Nicaraguan Society of General Medicine. My name is Estuardo Ralón. I'm the Vice President of the ICHR, and today with me I is the second Vice President of the Inter-American Commission, Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Arsemena de Troitinio, Country Reporter for Nicaragua and Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Today with me are, are also the Executive Secretary, Tania Renault, the Assistant Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Pulido, the Special Rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Muñoz, and the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. I'd like to open this hearing by greeting civil society organizations and Clement Bublé, that is a Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Peaceful uh, reunion and association who will be participating at this hearing through a video. I'd like to explain how time will be allocated today. The representative of the state of Nicaragua is not present today. And this is something that we truly regret. As a result, time will be distributed as follows. Civil society will have 20 minutes, then the state will have then, sorry, the spur of the UN will have 20 minutes. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights will have another inter intervention for 30 minutes. And then civil society will have 15 minutes and the commission will be wrapping up for five minutes. So I'd like to thank you for being here today. And I'd like to give the floor to civil society organizations for 30 minutes. You can go ahead. Good morning, President, Vice President, Commissioners, Secretary. My name is Lionel Arguello. I am from the Nicaraguan Society of General Medicine. We would like to thank the Commission for holding this hearing to monitor the extremely serious situation of freedom of association in our country. In Nicaragua, there is such a persecution that participating in these spaces means serious retaliations for those who are present and for our families. We are here representing 18 associations that are documenting human rights violations that are, that are supporting their victims in spite of the permanent risks that they face. We see that many of our personal or legal personality has been canceled and we have been forced to exile. We are here and to indicate and to mention the different human rights violations committed by the state of Nicaragua. We are here to continue explaining what is happening and to warn about the repressive mechanisms that have been replicated or that could be replicated in other parts of the continent. Acting before what is happening in Nicaragua is necessary to stop authoritarian trends in the region. The collapse of the civic space in Nicaragua does not only mean punishment and persecution of those that are dissidents, but it's also a strategy to close 
freedom. Any cancelled association, any confiscated media outlet, any closed university, and any church or indigenous people that is being persecuted is because of the role of corruption networks that want for the regime to prevail and they are illegally enriching themselves and they are destroying our country by promoting intolerance and hatred. I would like to give the floor to one of my colleagues who will be talking about the different repression strategies of the state to eliminate freedom of association. Honorable commissioners, the closing of civic spaces by the regime of Ortega Morillo has reached a very critical situation. In Nicaragua, so far, there are no single organization that defends human rights that is able to operate legally. The dismantling of freedom of association in the country has led to 2,600 organizations whose legal personality has been cancelled since 2018. 95% of those organizations since March this year. And today, 100 had been closed. Many of them have had their assets confiscated. Four independent media outlets that have national coverage were violently occupied and their assets were confiscated without a legal proceeding. Five political parties were left without juridical personality by the Electoral Council. 128 neighbor organizations, 124 medical associations, 62 religious organizations and 136 art cultural organizations were deprived of their juridical personality. Six Nicaraguan universities have been canceled and their assets have been transferred to public universities and seven international universities have been removed of their legal status. 225 NGOs in Nicaragua and 309 international NGOs who were working in human rights have been canceled. These include 176 women organizations who work for the rights of women, 76 indigenous and Afro-descendant organizations, 109 environmental organizations, 27 organizations related to the internal conflict, among others. The organizations here have documented the practices that the regime is using to eliminate the right to association in Nicaragua. And we are going to present these practices now. First, the systematic and generalized persecution against civil society organizations, which is based in a legal framework that has been specifically created since 2018 to repress freedom of association. Law against money laundering, and funding for terrorism, and also the recovery of massive destruction arms. The law of 2018 has been used to justify the cancellation and the suspension of the juridical personality of many of the organizations by indicating that the lack of compliance of their obligations does not allow these organizations to be operating law 1040 on the regulation of foreign agents of 2020 imposed several arbitrary sanctions in order to cancel the juridical personality and to use the funds of the organizations that the executive branch considered that opposed its interests. This law has used to cancel at least at least 2900 organizations. In April 2022, the National Assembly approved law 1115 on um, NGOs that removed other laws and execute measures to cancel civil associations. And they are also confiscating their assets. In August this year, the National Assembly amended that law through law 1127 by adding important changes. And now the Ministry of the State has the power to approve and to cancel the 
juridical personality, including unions and community and sport groups. And this goes against the constitutional power of the National Assembly. The concentration of power in the executive branch is absolute. This year, the cancellations conducted by the Ministry of the State in implied the cancellation of over 100 organizations, as it happened yesterday. And there is no analysis regarding the infractions or the violations that these organizations allegedly committed. This goes against the right to defense and to be heard. And therefore, the executive branch has absolute power, power and this goes against any warranty of due process of law. Also, we see the closing of the administrative ways and proceedings because the minister of the state is now responsible and they are not replying any reports of communications made by the organizations. They do not renew any certificates or approvals so that these organizations can operate and there are intentional delays. The goal is clear. They want to fabricate false arguments to justify, justify the cancellation of the juridical personality of these organizations. Some organizations attempted to present the documentation even on 21 times. Uh, if this is the case of Popona, but those requests were rejected and the state argued that there were requirements that were not included in the norms or regulations. Now I would like to give the floor to Carlos Guadamuz from the Collective of Human Rights Nicaragua Nunca Mas, who will be now exposed the patterns of repression of free, against freedom of association. Um, thirdly, we would like to say that the regime of Ortega Murillo has appropriated illegally and unconstitutionality the assets of the organizations. Not all the organizations, not all the organizations have their assets confiscated, but we see the de facto confiscation of the assets of 43 organizations. And this includes 13 women's organizations, six private universities and four independent media outlets. The methods to confiscate assets illegally are different and they change over time. We see the police occupation of the buildings. We see also transfers that are illegal and we see the cancellation of the juridical personalities and we see the freezing of their bank accounts. Also, the first organizations who were canceled in 2018 have all their assets confiscated, their accounts were frozen and the personal assets of the workers were also confiscated. They confiscated their computers, for example. So the assets now are the under the ownership of the state because they accused these organizations to promote a coup. And this is against the decree of the National Assembly, which indicated that assets should be uh, confiscated only under certain regulations. Now the state is using these confiscated assets and we are concerned because what we see is that the state is not complying with social security obligations or with the salaries of the state workers. And they are also confiscating the buildings of these organizations. These, organ these buildings are now buildings or facilities of the state, but they are not open for example, we have the case of Operación Sonrisa, an NGO whose building is now a museum and is a drug rehabilitation center. And also is, we have the case of Popona whose facilities now are a health center. We see that this has a very strong symbolic value because social spaces are being transformed into spaces of the regime. Fourth, fourthly, um, the state is using the judiciary to prevent access to justice, taking into consideration the serious violations of the right to justice. We see that the different organizations resorted to writs of amparo uh, when their 
personality was cancelled or their assets were confiscated, but they faced several barriers to file remedies. For example, they did not receive any notification by the Minister of the State as is required by law. They have no access to financial resources because of the freezing of their accounts, and they did not receive the documentation sent by the authorities. This has been the modus operandi of the judiciary for several years, and this created less motivation, and the NGOs decided not to present or to file remedies sometimes. The Supreme Court of Justice did not resolve not any, none of those remedies filed by the organizations. And this proves that the internal justice is not working. And every time that someone presented or filed a case, they suffer risk and threats, especially the members of the organization. As a result, the organizations decided not to present or to file domestic remedies because of the serious violations to their right to freedom of association. We, they realized that this of the filing of remedies was ineffective. Also, four organizations have presented requests before the Honorable Inter-American Commission of Human Rights so that the commission determines international responsibility of Nicaragua. We should mention that everything that has been mentioned so far is supported by other violent practices executed by the state of Nicaragua so that it articulates its repression strategy that goes against the freedom of association of these organizations. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Mr. Castillo, so that he explains these practices. I know that you are uh, muted. Yes, I'm sorry. Stigmatization and hate speeches uh, pronounced by high authorities of the state included, including the presidential couple against human rights organizations, independent journalism, religion organizations and defenders are almost done on a daily basis. This discourses pronounced in public events and through social media use uh, adjectives such as uh, criminals, uh, people against the motherland, terrorists, among others. They seek to make the citizens believe that their work and their association are a crime fostering social confrontation and legitimizing violence, discrimination and attacks and harassment against those persons. We're very much concerned by the seriousness of police violence that the regime resorts to to persecute organizations and its members. Also, the surges and police attacks of many organizations that were extremely violent. They broke, they, they tore down doors and broke furniture and attacked security uh, workers, administrative workers, and other persons present, as it happened in the case of the Instituto de Liderazgo de las Segovias, for example. We even documented violent attacks against journalists that were covering these uh, illegal searches. On the other hand, it's extremely serious and worrying the political persecution against organizations and members of those organizations or any persons that are in any way related to those organizations. The criminalization and arbitrary detentions of uh, authorities and members of the organizations that are considered opposite uh, the opposition is part of a strategy to undermine the freedom of association, uh, hindering the citizenship from organizing itself to exercise their rights. The case of the Foundation Violeta Barro de Chamorro and its workers is a very clear example of this pattern. Not only the organization has been investigated, but actually five of its members have been deprived of their liberty and sentenced to prison. At least four of them have been forced to exile and at least other 157 persons were summoned to give testimony before the public ministry 
for their alleged uh, link to this organization. Currently, there are more than 209 persons that have been sentenced and deprived of their liberty on the basis of political reasons ever since 2018. Many of the members of organizations of civil society who continue being in uh, under non-humane organizations and subjected to inhuman and degrading treatment and even torture, which could lead to irreversible damage. However, the state continues uh, failing to comply with several orders for their immediate release. I give the floor to Maru Ruiz of Fundación del Rio and Irrel Local, who will speak about the main impacts on the organizations themselves and the population in general. Dear commissioners, the mass closure of organizations have a has a serious impact on the population of Nicaragua and the members of these organizations because the restrictions that have been imposed are not only human rights violations, but actually have a humanitarian impact. The assessment of only one example of 53 organizations that have been closed down is a reflection of a reduction of 419 million dollars in development, the loss of more than 1,000 formal jobs, and the lack of assistance for millions of people related to these organizations. The cancellation of the legal personality uh, prevents them from uh, managing money from abroad. Also, the uh, seizure of their goods has meant the loss of infrastructure and facilities where millions of families was were uh, assisted, such as uh, different hospital institution. The seizure of this um, assets account for more hundred for four hundred and sixty thousand dollars for this organization and one more than one million dollars for Fundación del Rio. In recent cancellations, we have seen. Uh, freezing of bank accounts uh, for the University Paulo Freire, for example, at the season of uh, the assets of Federación Red Local. Also, this entails impact to the general population, particularly on some collectives that are subjected to historic discrimination, which increases their vulner vulnerability, such as indigenous peoples, children, students, and women. Forced massive exile of Nicaraguans is a result of this uh, attack on the social fabric by destroying organization that provided uh, support and assistance. There are more than 400,000 Nicaraguans abroad, including authorities of the organizations attacked. This also entails social uh, impacts such as depression, feelings of of guilt and failure. The exile entails a, an attack, a, a direct repression of persons who uh, cross borders and are separated from their families. The attack on organizations that devoted were devoted to promote art, art and culture, for example, the Academy of Science, History and Geography, the International Festival of Poetry, the Cinema Association and drama organizations, for example, also affect negatively this, the organization. Nicaragua is the only uh, Spanish speaking country that does not have an academy on language right now. This is also part of the persecution of musicians and artists that have been forced to exile to not be uh, left in prisons. Others were expelled after having been detained and others do not have the right to go back to their country. Also the closure of medical associations, all created a serious impact on the association on the society which translates into a decrease in the quality of health assistance that was received by the poorest of uh, society members in the country moreover one of the greatest impacts was on indigenous peoples which leaves them unprotected 
and continue being subjected to extreme violence exerted by third parties that are armed in the territories and which are involved in murders and uh, dispossession of the indigenous people's goods and also the forced uh, expulsion, ex expulsion. Many of human rights defenders, parts of these organizations are subjected to death threats, uh, the retention of their documents and even arbitrary detentions, which constitutes uh, persecution and retaliation for their work. I give the work to, I, I give the floor to my colleague who will be assessing the impact on the rights of women. The Nicaraguan state, instead of guaranteeing the rights of women, has persecuted systematically the organizations that defend those rights. Out of 176 organizations that have been canceled, 55 work for the right to live free of violence, 34 for autonomy, 21 for the rights of people, indigenous peoples or Afro-descendant peoples, 19 for the rights of children and adolescents, 11 for sexual and reproductive rights, 10 for education, 6 for labor rights, 6 for human rights in general, 5 for democracy, 5 for the rights of people with disabilities, and 4 for culture. 90% of the feminist organizations that were cancelled uh, happened in this year. Most of these organizations have been struggling for decades and their cancellation not only means a violation to the right of association but also entails that women that already were in serious conditions of vulnerability are more exposed to violence and other human rights violations. The situation added to the dismantling of institutionality to enforce the rights of women has led to an increase of lethal violence in an environment of maximum impunity. Nicaragua had 71 femicides, femicides in 2020 and 2021, one of the greatest figures in the region. This year, we see 42 homicides and 110 attempts of femicide. There's also alarming figures as regards sexual violence. The state itself, on the basis of legal figures, registered more than 4,000 cases, that is 13 sexual uh, violation, sexual abuse per day. And many of those are against girls of until 12, 12 years old, most of them perpetrated by family members. By canceling these organizations, the defenders and activists must be dispossessed of their livelihoods for many of them. Simultaneously, they face serious attacks. Our organization has registered 1,700 uh, attacks until August this year. We must consider that there is an underreporting of these cases due to self-censorship. This includes arbitrary detention, life threats, or threats to cause damage to family members, illegal searches of their homes, campaigns of defamation, stigmatization, and different forms of harassment and migration repression. We also see different uh, situations of uh, expulsion. We have registered 124 cases of defenders that were forcibly displaced. 74% of them happened between 2020 and 2021. I give the floor to my colleague Jorge Mendoza de Codemi so that he may explain what's the impact on children, education, and what are our requests. Jorge, yours, you are muted. Dear commissioners, Nicaraguan's children are exposed to vulnerable situations due to the repressive measures that have been implemented. The investment on education is only 3.8% of the GDP. Educational programs are frozen and the quality is the, the lowest in the region, according to UNESCO. The state has dismantled the national system of uh, integral protection and children including NGOs that worked on this topic. Also, the system of references and counter-references between government organizations was cancelled, uh, which worked 
on, which implies lack of reliable is information. These organizations provided assistance in education and health for children and protection for um, young adolescent mothers, among other services. We estimate that 350,000 families are no longer assisted and 50,000 children will be affected by the lack of access to these programs. Massive exile also impacts children in Nicaragua who must be left in the country under the care of other family members and impact on children and the 19 children and grandchildren of political prisoners is extremely worrying we have seen hunger strikes that managed to get the regime to grant visits of family members to political prisoners who are not satisfied their right to have uh, an ongoing communication with them. The impact of this lack of communication is also extremely worrying. More than 40 students have been murdered so far as a result of the demonstrations on the streets, and many of those are part of the political prisoners right now. Between 2018 and 2020, the regime erased many of the regis of the history of these persons and thousands of students have been affected by the closure of university institutions. Dear commissioners, Nicaragua lives in state of siege where all guarantees democratic and civil democratic um, rights have been uh, infringed. So we request the Nicaraguan state to cease the repression of the civic space by removing all obstacles that prevent the, ex the exercise of freedom of association, particularly ceasing to use law in an arbitrary and abusive way and reviewing the regulatory framework that is allowing for the serious infringement of those rights. To, to seize the attacks against the organizations of civil society, its members and its goods, abstaining from canceling in a massive manner different organizations and restoring the legal status of the organizations that were canceled, giving them back their assets and freeing immediately all persons that are still deprived of their liberty for political reasons. Also, we request the Honorable Commission to continue monitoring the serious deterioration of the situation of freedom of association in Nicaragua and to include specific information in its reports and releases to prioritize the requests submitted by the organizations present today to address the situation of freedom of association in Nicaragua. And finally, we request the commission to remind the state of its obligation to not exercise any retaliation on the persons that are participating today or its or their family members. Thank you. Thank you very much to the representatives of civil society organizations for such a courageous and valuable comments and also for having uh, administered time so properly. So now we go to hear the United Nations expert who will be uh, presenting through a recorded video. So I give the floor to him. I'm very grateful to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights for giving me the, this opportunity. I apologize for not being able to join you in person because today I'm presenting also my report to the General Assembly. In this regard, I would like to extend a cordial greeting to commissioners, Stuart Ralom, Margaret May, Esmeralda Arosemana and Carlos Bernard, as well as to the member of the Commission Secretariat team, Tanya Reno and Maria Claudia Pirudo, and to Pedro Baca, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, and Soledad Garcia Munazo, the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, and Culture, Culture and Environmental Rights. I would also like to extend a call 
Tiyanpiti to the 17 civil society organization that requested this space. Your work is invaluable for the promotion and the protection of the rights that fall within my mandate. Since I started as the UN Special Rapporteur on the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and of association in April 2018, I have followed with deep concern the situation in Nicaragua regarding the exercise of the rights covered by my mandate. In this regard, I would like to use these minutes to briefly comment on the information I have received since that day until today about what is happening in the country. Due to the reform of the social security system in 2018, a wave of protests began in different parts of Nicaragua. Despite the fact that the decree imposing the reform was repealed, the protests continued generating an escalation of violence of warring level. This was witnessed by the Inter-American Commission itself during its visit to Nicaragua that same year. In the context of these events, excessive use of force by the national police was reported, resulting in at least 120 deaths and more than a thousand people injured, detained, or missing. Unfortunately, these were not the only alarming consequences of the acts of repression reported for the excessive use of force against the peaceful protester. It was reported to my mandate that several people, after being released, have continued to suffer reprisal to this day for their participation in the 2018 protests and for their work as human rights defenders. They even report that they have suffered reprisal for participating in events commemorating the victim of the 2018 protests. In addition to the physical and psychological safety reported by those who were subject to detention in the context of these events, they also affirm that they continue to be monitored, persecuted, and threatened after being released through amnesty law. In a similar way, environmental and journal environmental defenders and journalists reported strong state repression to stop peaceful demonstration on environmental issues and protection of the rights of indigenous people. In addition, it was reported that more than 200 people were registered as poli political prisoners during the last year. I was informed that the Nicaraguan government began a policy of dismantle social movements through the persecution of their leaders, the legitimization of their work with stigmatized, stigmatized speeches, the cancellation of the legal status of several non-governmental organizations, and even the confiscation of their property. Likewise, reprisals were reported against civil society organizations for collaborating with the United Nations and the Organization of American States. My reportership has expressed concern about the use of indeterminate law and broad legal concepts in criminal law, such as terrorism and crimes against security, to restrict rights and persecute those citizens who exercise their right to freedom of association, as has occurred in the case of Nicaragua. Likewise, information was received that in Nicaragua, crimes such as illicit arm trafficking or possession or robbery have been used to restrict and punish those who exercise their right to assembly. 
the decisive effect of this type of measure goes directly against the positive obligation of the Nicaraguan state to take measure in favor of the protection of the exercise of this fundamental freedom, the right to peaceful assembly and association. It seems that these behaviors have been constituted by the state of Nicaragua as a censorship strategy. Over the years, through my mandate, I have witnessed the development of what appears to be a clear pattern of seeking to repress civic space in Nicaragua against this man, dissenting voices, including journalists, human rights defenders, civil society actors, academic students, members of the Catholic Church, political party, and opponents of the government. This is of particular concern because the rights covered by my mandate have historically been used as a platform to advocate for change, promotion of other rights, and awareness raising. Therefore, these measures could have a greater impact than just violating the right to freedom of association and peaceful assembly. It will also undermine the enjoyment of other rights. Recently, I received information that from 2018 to July this year, the legal personality of 1,600 civil society organizations have been cancelled, being 485 cases only from June 2020. This number are alarming because, as I have pointed out on previous occasions, the suspension and involuntary dissolution of an association are the most severe form of restriction of freedom of association. While I have urged states to ensure that association, whether registered or unregistered, can fully exercise their right to request, receive, and use without pre authorization or other unjustified obstacles, funding, and other resources from natural or legal person, whether national foreign or international, the case of Nicaragua has been completely the opposite with the general law for the regulation and control of non-profit organizations that have been enforced since May 6, 2022. Let me conclude by advocating for increased attention to human rights situation in Nicaragua in particular, the lack of conducive environment to the exercise of the right to freedom of association and peaceful assembly. It is important that all mechanisms, the international community, remind Nicaragua about their obligation to protect and to promote these fundamental freedoms. The state should cooperate and should open his border for the scrutiny of the international and regional system, Yumara system. I thank you. Muy bien, pues hemos escuchado tal como Very habíamos well. We have listened as we have indicated on the video the comments of the expert of the UN. Now, the Inter-American Commission will begin its intervention. We will have up to 30 minutes. And for that, I'd like to give the floor first to the second vice president of the Inter-American Commission, Commissioner Margaret May McCauley. Thank you, Mr. President. And um, it is my honor to greet all of you um, here present, um, you have come to inform us about the serious restrictions on the human rights, in fact, all of them, all the human rights a citizen expects to enjoy within their state borders in Nicaragua. Um, this has been going on since 2018. And I had the unfortunate honor to be the president of the commission at the time. 
and did visit Nicaragua in the attempts, one of, one of the many, 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 many attempts the commission made and, and tried to see how one can stem the tide of the loss of democracy in Nicaragua. Uh, well, we all know no action succeeded, those by the commission and those by the United Nations and any other institution, including the Cardinal um, there in Nicaragua, with whom I had a long meeting while I was there. It is, it really, really upsets one's whole being to live at a time and to experience directly what has happened in Nicaragua. I met so many mothers whose children had been picked up, detained, killed, maimed, tortured in every kind of way, including sexually, if they happened to be lots of those who were young women. Um, universities, students were in peril. Everybody who believed in democracy was in peril and still are in peril. This is not the life we should be having anywhere in 2022, well, from 2018, and, and certainly not now, but we are. And citizens who believe in democracy in Nicaragua and who definitely have the right to expect not to be criminalized, tortured, locked up, detained, uh, uh, have their, their, their properties confiscated and, and organizations, which are really, to my mind, is uh, an unlawful act because this falls outside of every single international human rights procedure relating to property, which belongs to someone. There's no due process in other in for them to confiscate the property, except the, the, the imposition of a, a, a charge of either you're trying to make a coup, you're an enemy of the state, you're terrorists, all sorts of abuse, which come from the mouths of the people who are supposed to protect the rights of their citizens. And citizens have a right to believe that their government will protect their rights, but that has been, they have been abused in this way, that the government is in fact the actor the main actor, which has a, a continues to abuse their rights and has swept away all the rights of a democratic state from them. Uh, um, and it is clear that Nicaragua no longer believes in any of the principal standards of democracy. And what is the main belief there is the authoritarianism of the regime. That if you do not clearly support what I say or what we say, you are an enemy of the state and you can be picked up at will and detained and you cannot really have access to justice because nobody is independent there, not the courts, not any agency of the state. And you could be locked up for whatever period the state has decided you should be. And of course, the way you are treated whilst in state custody does not, we don't even need to go into details there because it's too upsetting from the details I remember we received about it. It is, it saddens anyone 
who has the slightest belief in any democratic standard, principle, or, or, or state. It is the saddest thing that can happen, apart from what is happening in Ukraine now. But it's, to my mind, the one in tandem. Governments have to be have to act with principle and uphold the standards of democracy. It is part of the charter. It is part of the organization of American state fundamental structure. And yet here we have Nicaragua being one of those, and it's not the only one in the region, but one of those which is so blatantly destroying too large a number of its population and stealing their assets and stealing their lives, the years they have to live with their families and pursue their life plans. I have a strong belief that people who believe, who behave in the way the government of Nicaragua is behaving cannot permanently get away with their crimes because to my mind, they are crimes. And what has been happening have been crimes against humanity in lots of instances there. And they must answer for them. I'm sorry, I, I, I will not go any further because there are so many, women are, uh, have always been vulnerable in every, every state in the world so that they need continuous protection, uh, work, solid work to uphold their human rights. Within the group of women, we have race, racial groups which are so vulnerable because they've always been discriminated against and continue to be. Indigenous, Afro-descendants, the very uh, other, other person, peoples of color, the very poor and the poor. The elderly, the persons with disability, oh, wait, rapporteurship, the rapporteur is there. And we, we, there are so many vulnerable people. And even those ones who are not within vulnerable groups, can no longer rely on what they knew was safe in a crowd. We will continue to work as best we can and we have to work together. And this sort of thing causes people of integrity who have always been persons of integrity to find ways and means to pursue that which is right, but which the state would call a criminal act. It's, I am disgusted, I am upset, and but we will continue to work. Mr. President, thank you. Gracias, Commissioner Margaret. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. Now I would like to give the floor to the country rapporteur, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. President or chair of this hearing, I would like to respectfully greet and to express my solidarity the 17 organizations who um, requested this hearing today. Listening to you, it's uh, very important because we are able to recall everything that has happened. And you have reminded us of the extremely seriousness of the situation in Nicaragua. Having all these figures is so important, especially for the work that we can do as in the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And this is how we can monitor the actions of a state member of the organization, of a member state of the organization. Today, we are not here to discuss the denunciation 
of the state of Nicaragua. But however, no state can deny the constitutionary law, the humanitarian law, the need to protect their inhabitants, their citizens. They cannot deny the respect of human rights, which exists regardless of whether you belong to an organization or not. And you today, I hear to present information according to the title of this hearing, that is the situation in public spaces, civic spaces, which are almost all closed. And we have recorded extremely serious actions, censorship strategies that we need to evaluate and we need to analyze these strategies because they are complex, because they are harsh. I think this is a terror regime. This is what I have said in the past. When we focus on a right, here we have the right to freedom of association and to freedom of assembly. I think that Haide was talking about this. Society, citizens are prevented from getting organized. They cannot have their places, their spaces to solve their own issues. And when you present all those figures regarding the different organizations whose rights are being violated, we are seeing that there are very specific rights that are being affected, that are being violated. And we know that these vulnerable groups should be protected under these organizations whose rights have been violated. So this is a regime that uses all sorts of strategies to censor, to silence, to prevent community life or the life of collectives, organizations. And for sure, there should be a way out. As Commissioner Margaret was saying, we need to find a way to overcome these challenges. You talked about the about the judiciary and you have pointed out that the judiciary is not the space to go and find an alternative to prevent the violation of all these rights i have a question but i have a that is between parentheses because this is not the aim of today's hearing but i understand that in Nicaragua today, there is a situation within the Supreme Court. They are telling that Albaluz, Mr. Albaluz was removed, that there is another justice replacing this person. And I would like to know right now, what is the current status of the judiciary to be able to evaluate what's actually happening there? But as I was listening to you yesterday, I read our proposal for a thematic report. And we have a thinking about a thematic report that is on the closing of civic and democratic spaces in Nicaragua. And for drafting that report, we need all the information that you have with details and i'm really happy to be able to have a specific information regarding the specific situation of the health area the situation of indigenous peoples the situation of women the situation of boys girls and adolescents and um their report is entitled civic spaces 
And I think that we need to include a part that addresses what happens with the right to freedom of association and assembly. Because we need to highlight the rights that are being violated when those civic spaces are closed. And for that, we need all the documentation that you have. We need that information in order to be able to continue drafting the report. The report is now under the review, but I'm sure that the Mezzani team is taking notes and all the information that you have presented to us today. And I'd like to conclude my intervention by saying that I'm fully committed to your cause. I had the opportunity to listen to Nelsa Alfred, a person that spoke before the UN. And then its country closes doors to hers, to her. This is the level of control the regime has over everything. I don't like to talk about the government. I prefer to talk about the regime because this regime is preventing the entry of a person that goes to the UN to represent indigenous peoples, not only from Nicaragua, but from the continent. And this person has been denied entry because the regime of Nicaragua is always trying to censor, to silence, to find any violent ways to exert control. And preventing a national from entering the country is also a way of violence. And what can I say regarding my rapporteurship on the rights of boys, girls, and adolescents? We are paying special attention to the violations committed against children and their parents, because it's not about the right of their parents, but also the right of their children not seeing their parents detained this way. Representatives of all these organizations, I just want to express again my commitment to continue supporting you. We need to find new ways. And one of these ways is to make your situation visible. There are several people participating online and I have a message for the regime of Nicaragua because I know that they will be listening to us. Nicaragua needs to go back and to recover the freedom of its people. Political prisoners cannot exist in democratic countries. Nicaragua needs to open these real spaces of dialogue. I would like to respectfully greet all of you and I would like to repeat my commitment to support you to continue denouncing so that the international community does something, exerts pressure over a state that is not compliant with international standards. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Esmeralda. I give the floor to Commissioner Carlos Bernal. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Very briefly, so I don't take too much time of the second round for the civil society. I would like to second um, Commissioner Macaulay and Commissioner Arizamena's words, especially the words of Commissioner Arizamena, who does not doubt in referring to this regime as a uh, regime of terror or horror. I've been working in the commission for a few months since January the 1st this year and truth be told it's hard to find a parallel situation 
in our continent as regards such a massive infringement of human rights. At this hearing, we have seen one dimension of that violation, which is the, ex the collective exercise of human rights, for example, through the freedom of association. But of course, many uh, civil society representatives also stated that the individual dimension is the most uh, affected part of the society. I would like to make three calls. Uh, the one call for the international community to continue uh, observing the Nicaraguan situation because this cannot longer uh, continue in time. And I'm saying this in my capacity as a commissioner of a commission that has observed and monitored the situation of Nicaragua and seen a very extreme infringement of human rights, especially the most important one, which is the right to life. The figures of femicide uh, that were stated by the representatives are completely, uh, um, cannot be stand. Also to request all necessary measurements so that members of organizations that tell the truth are not longer endangered. And also, like Commissioner Rosamena said, we want to, to say that this uh, flagrant infringement of human rights must change. This is unsustainable, it's unacceptable. Here in this moment of the 21st century, there cannot be a country that infringes the human rights of its in, of its citizens in such a way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Bernal. Uh, does the Executive Secretary has any comments to do? Thank you very much, Chair of this hearing. I want to deeply thank the information that has been submitted by the civil society representatives. I'm seeing here a screen full of men and women that are very courageous and very constant in their struggle for democracy and for foundational principles of all states that are democratic and respectful. So thank you very much for all the information that you always submit, for always keeping in touch with the special monitoring mechanism for Nicaragua's team. And I'm also taking this opportunity to say that the Meseni team is also here present. Evidently, we are seeing a legal and economic thinking that has always been attempting to close the civil and civic spaces. And precisely in civic spaces, we see the emergence of ideas to seek solutions. Sometimes we see radical ideas and it's always an extremely necessary to be in contact with organizations. In this civic space, we see a fundamental milestone of democracy. The commission in the framework of such a horrifying situation becomes also a safekeeper and, and as a safekeeper of the memory of civil society of the country of Nicaragua. It's a memory of the violations of human rights as it has been documenting this in chapter four and it has been done by the Miseni teams. So my question addressed to the civil society is whether in this logic of being safekeepers of memory and also being an inter-American uh, memory as a whole, tell us what else can we do? Because if the democratic space in your country is closed down and we cannot see any ideas emerging, we must seek alternatives, alternatives to generate these new ideas in this moment of dialogue we can have with Commissioner Ranlon, Margaret McCauley and, and other members of our team. So what, can, what else can we do as a commission to be a memory and to continue being the inter-American consciousness when it's about the case of Nicaragua? How else can we contribute? Just tell us because 
my fellow commissioners have said that the team and the plenary itself is available and, and willing to exchange in, in this dialogue and exchange of ideas to continue moving forward in finding ways to safeguard and care for the rights of human beings in Nicaragua. Thank you. Thank you. We have a couple of minutes. So I give the floor to our Redesca Special Rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Thank you very much, First Vice President, Commissioner Rallon and Chair of this hearing. Thank you to the Commission and all persons and organizations that are here representing the society at this hearing. I don't know if Pedro Baca is, is here as well, but I want to really say that for both special rapporteurships, the situation of Nicaragua is a priority and has been a priority for some time as regards our respective mandates. At this specific hearing shows a systematic pattern of human rights violation that affects many of, of the rights that we monitor. And we have been working in a coordinated manner with the Rele and the Meseni. We have issued some joint uh, press releases. And also uh, my special rapporteurship has issued uh, an individual press release in February 20th condemning the cancellation of the legal status of 26 universities and education centers. So this hearing is extremely important to gather even more information and data on this systematic pattern that, as the country reporter has said, this is unacceptable. And of course, it deserves the maximum condemnation of all of the commission fabricating false arguments or hindering organizations from presenting their documents and therefore uh, seeing this consolation of the judicial personalities is inadmissible. So I would like to highlight the impact of the situation on uh, economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights, as it was very well shown by civil society representatives. I'm seeing scientific and medical organization representatives with whom we have been working so far. We see an effect on the right to education, health, food, and the sustainable development of the people of Nicaragua. So it's very important to wear the, this lens of interdependency of rights when we observe the situation because of course this endangers the right to to uh, of associate to freedom of association as the united nations representatives uh, representative very well said i would like to ask on the effect on the right to work of persons who work at these organizations that have been cancelled also as regards this Security, social security of those workers and whether if you can expand on what is the impact of this undue appropriation on the part of the state of Nicaragua of different assets that do not belong to them and that belong to national and international organizations that were forced to lose to give up those goods and assets and finally i would be it would be very interesting if you can tell us a bit more about the impact on education and freedom of academic thought and also on the impact of cultural right how is this impacting the culture of nicaragua as it has been stated uh, before during the hearing thank you very much mr chair Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. I'm sure the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression has some comments to make. I'm also, I also have some comments to make, but since we have five minutes at the end, I would suggest that we use those minutes right now, if we can start the clock. So I give the floor first to Mr. Pedro Vaca. Thank you very much for your generosity, Mr. Chair. I promise I'll be brief. 
First, thank you to the civil society representatives for their courageous courageousness and the v value of the information they are submitting because there we see there is a regulatory framework for repression there is a closure of administrative ways so there is no possibility of um, of appealing different uh, situations and also the adjectives used are very stigmatizing there is also a vulnerability an infringement of rights through dispossession. There is a violence, verbal violence and police violence and constant criminalization against different uh, leaders. This has caused different exile situation, which affects in many cases journalists. So I would like to share that all of these are official measures that have been applied in an intense manner, in a targeted manner and an intentional manner and this is very concerning not only because of the past and the present but actually for the future i would like to mention a specific aspect that was mentioned before very briefly which has to do with removing the licenses of different channels uh tv and radio channels so we we are seeing a targeting of independent media outlets and religious media outlets in an electoral year. For example, I've seen, uh, I, I would like to know if you have any information as regards uh, actors uh, on related to media outlets for example what do uh, operators such as cnn operators say about this because there is an extended fear that may reach other society actors thank you thank you special rapporteur just very briefly i would like to comment on a couple of things first to acknowledge the organizations that are present today. When we started the hearing, I listed each of the organizations because it's very important that we all know, we all hear such an important work that is being conducted by by each of these organizations, despite the risk, the challenges, the harassment. You continue working constantly. And so I wanted to once again acknowledge your work then the uh the absence of the state representatives is really unfortunately unfortunate we have seen seizures of assets the use of insults the use of violence through police groups and the dismantling of institutions related to science art technology and all of that added to an isolation and uh, re refusal of accountability that is the obligation of any democratic states. So all of that show very clearly that is no democratic regime at the moment in place in Nicaragua. And it's important that the voice of all international bodies and organizations make a call to have a democratic transition so that all freedoms and human rights are respected. Democracy is a necessary condition and a basic condition to for the respect of human rights. When there is no democracy, the systematic violation is unfortunately the rule. This is what we see in Nicaragua at the moment. And also it's very regrettable that in the face of such an out attitude on the part of the state, the impact of si on science and technology technology affect the conditions of comprehensive development of citizens of Nicaragua and that is also extremely worrying and one of the deepest impacts to eliminate any opportunity of development by hindering the acts of anyone that thinks in opposites, opposite terms to the government in power so that would be all on my part and we are now going to the next part of this hearing which is giving back the floor to civil society organizations for 15 minutes so you have the floor Hola. Hola, muchas gracias. 
Hello. Well, thank you very much for all the comments that you have made that are very appropriate as regards the fact that we are living in Nicaragua in a state that uses repression to intimidate all citizenship and that limits and on in, in an increasing manner, the civil and political rights of persons, including the freedom of association and committing cr uh, crimes against humanity. I want to refer very briefly to the question as regards this situation of the judicial system and the recent uh, actions. We want to uh, say that in Nicaragua, justice operators particularly the judiciary itself do, does not uh, exercise the constitutional control, do not guarantee the enforcement of human rights. Quite the contrary, these are bodies that facilitate or are even tools of repression itself. Also in Nicaragua, we are not seeing an implementation of mechanisms to prevent torture as in implementing Nelson Mandela laws. In one year, two persons deprived of the liberty were found dead when they were under the state custody. This shows the extreme seriousness of the situation in Nicaragua. The judiciary recently allowed the public exhibition of political prisoners by conducting a hearing which is non-existent in our current legal system. So the justice operators have implemented criminal justice, which should be in principle an ultima ratio resource. They have implemented it in the first instance to try to intimidate all persons, human rights defenders, and in this case, civil society organizations. In fact, you can see that one of the tools, instruments that has been used to criminalize the freedom of association is the laws that have been presented in this hearing, including, including part of the control rules on uh, NGOs, which is part of an act that refers to preventing terrorism. So, Evidently, there is a factor of stigmatization and threat involved here. Also, as regards the effect on freedom of association, I wanted to refer to uh, cable channels and how they have responded. In practice, this, the state has acted in an arbitrary manner in the sense that organizations that are even that are part of us that are of private private uh, organizations the ministry of governance has issued notices summoning business persons to threaten them or to or, or to force them to close down different media outlets as it has happened in the country side Probably there's a number of organizations that uh, are not included in the data that we submitted today because there is a fear of reporting this thing, uh, these things. And also because these are private companies that play the role of um, conveying information through different means. And given these threats and this summons by the government alongside police operations, they are threatened on a daily basis. And as regards what the commission could do about this, we want to request the strengthening of the monitoring mechanism for Nicaragua and to do coordinated efforts with special committees of the United Nations to strengthen uh, surveillance uh, mechanism on precautionary measures and to uh, process the petitions in with a uh, high priority. Thank you, and I give the floor to my colleague, Leonel. Thank you, Carlos. I want to refer to three things very briefly. Well, first, it's our obligation to be here before you because rep we represent uh, non-for-profit organizations and our main uh, objective is 
the population and also there is a violation of receiving products and services that we use to provide to the population. I wanted to highlight as well the deterioration of mental health. In Nicaragua, we are all suffering different things. Some suffer physical ailments, but others are suffering mentally. Our mental health is extremely affected. And of course, the population living in Nicaragua is living in a constant terror situation. So we must underscore this damage that is unfortunately uh, long lasting and severe. Then given the forced uh, expulsion, for forced exile, we are losing professionals, professionals that took years to be prepared to be trained. And Nicaragua is losing assets in terms of infrastructure, but also in terms of persons. We will not have persons that are capable of reconstructing the country because everyone will be outside. We're losing it, intelligence, intelligence resources. Also, we, we know that you are gathering all evidence. So if you tell us what specific data you may need, we can complement the information that we have presented so that you have more details. And as regards what you can do, we know you are acting, but we believe that you must support us because it's your obligation to, to not have this situation normalized so that you are truly ambassadors and raise awareness in all countries. So when you speak to other countries to speak on the situation of Nicaragua because there is a strong media siege. And unfortunately in Nicaragua, the only thing you can be sure of is that tomorrow the situation will be worse than today. So persons just don't want to hear anything and you have a presence all throughout the world. So it's important that the Nicaragua situation is known. So I give the floor to my colleague now, Amaro, go ahead. Thank you. I just want to talk about the question regarding expropriations. We are seeing an arbitrary confiscation of the assets of the organizations. This includes the cancellation of the organizations of their personality and also the frozen of the bank accounts. And this includes even the illegal confiscation of documentation, equipment, and cash of the organizations. It is a situation that continues today. We don't know if these assets have been transferred to other persons. There is no access to legal information regarding the transfer of these assets. Maybe now they are on behalf of the state of Nicaragua or on behalf of other public institutions. But for example, the Escuela de Padres Fabreto um, or Fatanic and other organizations have opposed to this, but they suffer retaliation for that. So what we see is that this pattern continues in spite of the fact that it's unconstitutional. And this is what I wanted to mention. Ana y Fabio. Thank you. I just want to briefly refer to the impact that all this is having on culture, education, and culture. Because of the closure of over 100 organizations related to education, culture, and art, Nicaragua somehow is cutting its own arms and its mind because it's violating the right of the population to express themselves, to educate themselves. And this will have consequences for many generations, unfortunately. We 
went back to something that we belong that was that was in the history that was in the past for example the um, prohibition to print books and the exile of intellectuals artists and academia i would like to mention something that we fear that is not related to freedom of association but it has to do with the concern that we have because of our lives and it has to do with the actions of the regime abroad. Some months ago, Rodolfo Rojas appeared killed after being tortured. He was a Nicaraguan citizen who had exiled to, Nicara uh, to uh, Honduras. And this is not just by chance. The regime is acting with a lot of violence and aggressiveness. I need, we need for you to stay alert and to see what can be done for those who are in exile as well. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Monica. Commissioners, you have described correctly the terror regime that we are experiences experiencing as Nicaraguans. One of the critiques that we have made when describing the stance of business owners is the fact that everything that had to do with the economic aspects and financial aspects and businesses was separated from democracy. And you have summarized very well what is happening in Nicaragua. It is a society in which no one who opposes the regime cannot exist. So we need for the commission to request the IMF, the World Bank, and other banking and business mechanisms around the world, not to separate business and economy from human rights. It's not possible that these organizations still finance the regime and grade them well, and they are separating business and trade from human rights and from the lives of the people who are in charge of producing the goods in our country. So uh, that is what I wanted to say, and I wanted to give the floor to Haide. Thank you. To conclude, we would like one extra minute to say the following. First, we would like to thank, really thank all the work done by the IACHR and the different mechanisms, MESENI, HIA, and the extraordinary work that you have done to support us. With regard to what more can be done, we'd like to request that you continue monitoring and overseeing the situation of violations of human rights in Nicaragua, that the granting of precautionary measures could be expedited, but also we need to monitor the compliance of those precautionary measures by the state of Nicaragua. We are highly concerned about the situation of human rights defenders who are in Nicaragua, who in spite of the precautionary measures, they are at an imminent serious risk but also this situation affects those who are in exile because now they are detaining the family members of human rights defenders who have exiled. So we want to request you to strengthen the coordination with the universal system, with the special mechanisms of the UN and with the mechanism of accountability. We also would like to request 
to provide systematic information on the monitoring to multilateral organizations and political organizations, such as the General Secretary of the UN, the General Assembly of the UN, and also coordinating your actions with the universal system. Um, when it comes to the General Assembly and the Permanent Council of the OAS as well. In addition, we need for you to continue demanding our requests because we presented a request before the OECHR and before the Inter-American Commission. We are demanding things to the state and we are thinking especially about the release of political prisoners that are as such a risk. We will be giving you all the information about all the statements and testimonies provided to you today. And we will provide more information regarding questions that you have asked us. Finally, we would like to ask you to keep being close to us, to civil society organizations, to continue supporting us because we will continue with our commitment to our country. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to thank each of you to each of the organizations who share with us their brave statements, their brave experiences. Thank you so much. We've taken down all the requests that you have presented. And I would like to say that the plenary of the commission is committed to helping you. And I would like to highlight the work of the country rapporteur, Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena. We are working to give you as much support as possible within our capability, and we will continue doing so. And we know that the closing of civic spaces is something that should be addressed by international organizations and human rights organizations. And this, by addressing these issues, we can find a way out. We need to condemn everything that is happening. And, and it has been mentioned at the hearing, this should not be normalized. So you have our commitment, the commitment of the team of the executive secretariat, the plenary and the special rapporteurs, because Nicaragua is in our daily discussions and activities, because we understand the size of the crisis. And I want to ensure you that we, are committed to working to support you and to promote human rights in Nicaragua. Thank you so much. And now I would like to adjourn this hearing. Thank you so much. Big hug, good afternoon. Muchas gracias. Gracias.